Good afternoon. Pooling game objects is an effective way to increase the performance of your game. Ephemeral game objects that are rapidly instantiated and deleted in quantity to create visual effects benefit by using pools. Dot acquire. Instead of object.instantiate and set active false without delete. First thing to note is that acquire requires the name of the original game object. Or prefab. If the object is in the scene, this can include enough of the path to provide a unique reference. See the objects class enabled for more details. Like instantiate, acquire can be given a parent, position and rotation. If you don't provide a parent, clones have the same parent as the original. This game object is a sphere. We will create 21 of them, then remove 10. Note that the original is moved, yet the clones are on the original path while active. You see the ones that were closed disappear from the path and we put back into the pool. The pool is here. And as you can see, it has the game object and the pool game objects that we're not using. If you have a prefab under the resources directory, you don't even have to load it. In this case, the path name must be exhaustive and complete with only the prefab extension missing. If you level up here, there is one sitting in the project. It does not exist uh, in the hierarchy yet. And here is the code for it. As you can see, in this case, we've separated out the transforms. This is not normally necessary. The generic form of acquire returns the component specified rather than the owning game object. The parent position and rotation would usually be part of the acquire call. This sample splashes 21 copies of a text element across the screen before removing eight of them. If you have a look here, they'll be in the canvas, except for those that we've removed, which are put back here. If the prefab is not in a resource directory, then a copy needs to be placed in the scene for discovery. Again, they are created and removed. 